Um, uh, thank you. Uh, Minister, since November we've waited for the publication of Dr Geoffrey Shannon's report on his investigation of abuse into St John's Ambulance. While it is something to say why I, Fianna Fáil, or I admit even you, Minister, believe this report needs to be published, I think it is more important to put on the record why McFinnegan, the tireless campaigner, believes this publication to be in the public interest. And Minister, I want to welcome Mick to the gallery tonight here. He's, he's actually here and uh, listening to what, what I'm saying because Without his bravery and tenacity in seeking truth and justice, we wouldn't be here debating this. Um, the next page that I'm about to read, uh, Minister, is quotes from Mick, and this is what, this is what he, I've, I've, that I've taken from, from Mick. Over the past few years, a man synonymous with children's rights, advocacy and protection has painstakingly listened to many voices, including my own. It is thanks to that care shown and understanding of Dr. Geoffrey Shannon that I feel strong enough to speak out to you, our representatives. The report into the darkness times in St. John's Ambulance was commissioned by that organisation to shine a light on the truth of events. I know the truth of those events. I live the truth every day. I and thousands of others, victims of sexual abuse, can choose the time or day or night to think and dwell upon what was stolen, irreplaceable, childhood and innocence. I never knew truth could be physically heavy, not until I and many more silent victims were once again denied a simple act of transparency to allow the truth to come out. I earnestly hope that none of you ever have to carry this weight. I know this House is well aware of the actual refusal. Despite their words of St John's Ambulance to release Dr Shannon's report, I thank so many of you who courageously spoke out to call for the release of the report. And I particularly want to thank the President, Michael D Higgins, for his heartful intervention to quote President Higgins from a different poem in an early context. The poets are weeping for the words that never have been stolen for the text that once offered to reveal ancient times, a shared space of love and care, above all for the stranger. Today, I and others feel like a stranger in our own land. The continual refusal to publish the truth of the organization passed in a further abuse, not, not a historical one, but seared into our everyday lives once again we feel as children in the dominion of those who hold power over us and our story. This House can help to remove that hold um, over others. It can insist that those great voluntary organisations who do so much for our youth and our culture and in major way define our country as one of the finest places to live, cease all connections with this organisation until the unaltered report is published and our citizens can see and learn from a truth that has been blighted to so many lives. And that's, that's actually Mick's own words and I just think they were very passionate, Mick, and I was delighted to, to read them out here tonight. But this is not the end, Minister. Survivors need this report published full stop. There are no reasons for St John's Ambulance to do otherwise. Have we not learned that openness and truthfulness are key when addressing such issues of abuse? As well as President Higgins, I know a number of parties have called for this report to be published. And this evening, I put on record Fianna Fáil's call for this report to be published. But as I stood here and said so many times and, and so many horrors over our past, survivors must be listened to. They are at the centre of this and deserve the report published. Minister, I know you have written to the organisation asking this and I ask you again, Minister, do all you can with your power to make sure that this report is published. Thank you. Thank you, last Count Corla, uh, and I want to thank the Deputy for raising this uh, important issue today. Like her, I'd like to join her in, in welcoming Mick to, the, to, to the, the gallery today. 
I'm really glad of the opportunity to speak on the record of the House on, on this issue. And reports of historical sexual abuse in St. John's Ambulance in the 1990s have been highlighted in recent years, been highlighted by a number of deputies and senators of this House. I know Minister Rabbit would have uh, highlighted it when she was in opposition. I engaged with St. John's Ambulance in 2021 in relation to how the organisation proposed to respond to these reports. Dr. Geoffrey Shannon, senior counsel and internationally recognised expert in child protection, was subsequently commissioned by the board of St. John's Ambulance in March 2021 to conduct an independent review into the handling of historical child sexual abuse within St. John's Ambulance. As I'm sure the deputy is aware, the charity's regulatory authority under the aegis of the Department of Rural and Community Development is Ireland's statutory regulator for charitable organisations, including St John's Ambulance, and I or, or my department don't have a direct role in the governance of St John's Ambulance. Nevertheless, as we well know, abuse is not consigned to the past, and it is my role, in collaboration with Chitusla, the Child and Family Agency, to protect children now. As previously advised in my statement to this House in December of 2022, the terms of reference of the review, as fully agreed by Dr Shannon, set out that he would examine how St John's Ambulance handled past allegations of child sexual abuse. The review also was also tasked with examining the current standard of child safeguarding in the organisation. TUSLA is responsible for assessing any current risk to children arising from historical allegations of abuse. TUSLA has liaised with St John's Ambulance regarding the progress of the review and in order to improve safeguarding processes within the organisation. St John's Ambulance safeguarding statement, revised under advice from TUSLA, has now been deemed compliant by the TUSLA safeguarding statement compliance unit. I wrote to St John's Ambulance in December of last year, December 22, to inquire as to the status of the report. I received a reply from the Commissioner that the report was complete, had been received by St John's Ambulance and will be subject to legal review. In the reply, the Commissioner noted that survivors were un are understandably eager to review the findings of the report and reiterated that the Board of St John's Ambulance was committed to publishing the full report immediately after the relevant legal review had taken place. The, review, the reply from St John's Ambulance further stated that the Board was committed to ensuring the legal review was as quick and efficient as possible. In January 20, uh, on January 26th, I wrote to St John's Ambulance again. I again urged publicly as early as possible I again urged publication as early as possible, noting that the delay in publishing this report is of great concern. Each delay in publication risks a further diminution in trust of survivors in this process, and it is the survivors who are absolutely central to all of this. I once again reiterate and strongly urge the, the publication of this report as soon and that it be made available to survivors as soon as possible. Thank you, Lasker. Um, Sure. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Minister. And I think it is very important from speaking to, to Mick tonight here as well the, that I know that the work that yourself and Minister Anne Rabbit has done on this and that you have spoken and met with Mick Gregory and I, and I think that's very important and I know from Mick he has been very appreciative of this but I just feel Minister as you have said this is about the survivors this is about Mick and this is about this is how we now need to make sure that we get this report and I know as you said the report was completed by um, by uh, Dr Shannon in early November. It was handed over then to St John's Ambulance on the 28th of November. That's 10 weeks. We are now nearly going into three months, Minister, and I'm glad that you again spoke about, that you wrote again on the 26th of January. Um, you wrote again, I welcome that. But I just feel, Minister, we can't, and it's unfair on the survivors that we have not got that report. And I would ask, and I would ask all the, the representatives here tonight in Leinster House, to make sure that we all stand united to get that report and I think it is important that we have and as I spoke previously there has been this support from all parties here tonight but it is unacceptable and Minister I really feel we need to get this report urgently. Thank you. Minister to conclude. Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much, Deputy. Uh, like, like yourself, I also see the strong support across this House and indeed across the Shannad for uh, swift uh, publication of this report. And I know I spoke in the Shannad uh, just before Christmas in terms of a debate or statements that were held there on the importance of rapid publication. Um, this 
uh, review of practices within St. John's Ambulance was something that was asked for for a long time by survivors. It is something that is extremely important to them in terms of their ability to, um, to, to seek um, I, I don't even want to use the word closure, but to seek a recognition of what happened to them. Not only the actual sexual abuse itself, but the uh, manner in which their complaints or their engagement with an organisation, an organisation that should have protected them, was actually handled. And that's why it is so important that the outcome of that review is published, that it's published in full, it's published rapidly, but I think it's also important that there is, you know, direct engagement with survivors, and survivors are able to see directly the outcome of this uh, th 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 this report. That they're not leak reading, you know, ex excerpts from it in, in in media publications. That they're able to, to to see it directly. So, deputy, thank you for raising this issue. Again, thank you to to Mick for joining us uh, here this evening. And again, I just want to reiterate on the record of this house my call that this review would be published as soon as possible. So much.